Hi, I'm Thomas. Welcome back to Pilot's Workshop. We are now in the final sprint to finish the workbench. It is already fully functional at this point, but a good workbench should also help you to keep your workshop clean and organized. And with an integrated router and a pattern of holes on the work surface, this workbench can make a lot of mess. So in this video, we are going to address both those issues. At first, I want to box in the router. Even when a vacuum is attached to it, a lot of chips and dust spread under the workbench when it is being used. The box will only leave one side open, which is also necessary to reach the main switch on the router and to make sure it doesn't overheat. The next thing we're gonna build is a dust roof under the main work surface. I call it a roof because it looks and works like a roof when you look at a cutaway of the workbench. The point is to keep dust from piling up on the storage area underneath or small screws and bits getting constantly lost in there when they fall through the whole pattern, but instead come back out on the sides. This creates a convenient space to lead a dust collection pipe to the router in from the other end, which allows me to connect the dust collection of both my table saw and the router in one spot. One spoiler I can already give at this point is that I should have chamfered these edges of the large inner support beams, like that, to give more space for larger items to pass through. I noticed this a bit late and I didn't want to withhold this information from you should you want to build it yourself. So let's begin by making the box. I made it from 15mm MDF. Here I make a hole for a dust collection hose to go through. And I wish I had thought about this a bit more before drilling, because I put it about 5 cm too high as I noticed later. I then took a rasp to open up the hole ever so slightly, because the dust collection hose would need to go through it at an angle. As the box doesn't carry any load other than some vibration, I went the quick and easy way and screwed it together. I then drilled another large hole for the plug and cable of the router to pass through. The position of this hole was less crucial, but had to be in the rough area where the storage box in the left bottom corner would be, as that is where the safety switch for the router will be. Routers are incredibly loud, and rigidly connecting one to a large plywood surface doesn't make it any better. So this box isn't just good for dust control, but also sound control. And to limit the echo and dampen the noise, I lined all inside surfaces of the box with isolating foam. And this foam had to have three main qualities. First to be self-sticking, second to have a closed surface so dust won't go into the foam, and third being non-flammable. The one I got fulfills all requirements for the automobile industry. Then it was time to mount the box. 
and because this is a very unpleasant position to work in, I already prepared the bottom boards that the storage cabinets are gonna rest on, and loosely put them in place so that I can lay down on them. At this point, the space around the router is getting quite cramped, so I had a tough time designing it around all obstacles. And therefore, it was very important to make this part to very precise measurements. However, it fit, and a few screws hold it in place. Then the permanent dust collection hose could be installed. I let it go around the entire machine to avoid sharp corners in the dust collection system, hoping for a better airflow and therefore a more efficient system. Then I permanently screwed down the bottom of the storage and continued with the roof. I first had to make the backbone that it would be attached to. And since I didn't have any wood large enough, I laminated it together. Since the halves of the roof will be at an angle, I cut a relief into the bottom that could receive the two halves. After cutting it to length, I pre-drilled for the screws that would hold it in place. And because I didn't have any that were long enough, I first made a deep countersink hole, followed by a through hole. Attaching it went straight forward. In hindsight I would say that it would be best to mount this beam before the top frame and leg assembly get joined, about the time of part 6 of this video series, to avoid at least some of this overhead work. Now we arrived at the two roof surfaces. I made them from 10mm MDF. I like using MDF for these kinds of things because it is relatively cheap, easy to work with and most importantly it is sound absorbent. I cut off a thin strip on the edge at the required angle to give me a narrow flat area on the sides so that dust and chips coming down from the slope wouldn't just fall down but instead could be taken out with a vacuum cleaner in a more controlled fashion. The two pieces are joined with the help of the same small wedges that would hold them to the workbench. And those I quickly made on the bandsaw. some quick sanding and the wedges were ready. In order to manage this step with only two hands, I used a couple of clamps to hold everything together while I drill and screw it together. I put the screws in from underneath for two reasons. The first one being that they hold better when gripping into the wooden wedges instead of the MDF sheet. The second reason was that this way I could reach them even when the roof is mounted to the workbench if it would be somehow necessary. A bead of glue closed the small gap and stiffened the connection in the areas between the wedges. After the glue had dried, the part followed that would be best done with an extra set of hands. Again, I struggled through it with the help of a few clamps. But other than being very unpractical, 
This step was straightforward, but first I noticed during a test fit that I drilled that dust collection hole quite a bit too high, as mentioned before, and therefore had to cut out a portion in this part of the roof to allow the dust collection pipe to pass through. The reward of a mounted dust roof was instant. Small things that like to get lost will immediately come out of the side and not get trapped in some dark corner. The final step I want to show you in this video is the installation of the long dust collection pipe that connects the router to the other end of the workbench. I used a simple 40mm drain pipe for the straight section. And because I drilled that hole in the wrong spot, I had to squeeze in an extra angle piece. And with two wall mount pipe clamps, this step was done quite quickly. And that's it for this episode. All that's left to do now is the storage unit that will fill in the remaining space. All of that will be done in the next episode. So see you then. And in case you want to build this workbench yourself, the plans are now available on my website. I'll leave a link in the description below. This is Pilot's Workshop. Thank you for watching.